Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope you're all well. As we all know, I love talking about personal finance and investing on this channel. It's a big passion of mine and it's honestly really fun for me to talk about. I just find it really rewarding to have conversations with people about personal finance and investing and proving and showing just how important it is and just how fun of a subject it is guys come on now i've already shared a few personal finance and investing strategies and tips on this channel before i'll link the most recent investing video up the top here now if you want to go and watch it it's great if you are a beginner but none of the videos that i have put out have been a full comprehensive saving and investing guide so for today's video i've really tried to make it the one-stop shop for saving and investing a complete guide with all the tips included now this advice is pretty much what i follow every single day and i am very confident if you follow it it will make you a lot better off financially and hopefully it will make you and i millionaires this advice I'm about to give you is the exact advice that I've been following ever since I turned 18, ever since my financial life started. I'm 19, nearly 20, turning 20 at the end of the year and following this advice in such a short time I've been able to accumulate a stock market portfolio currently worth about 23,000 Australian dollars and I was also able to purchase my first investment property earlier this year. It was the first video I ever did on this channel and if you did want to go and watch that video of me touring my first property, click up here. I'll link it there for you. But it really does just go to show you, if you follow the financial and investing tips that I'm about to give you here in this video today, it will help you get on track with your finances and it can certainly set you up for a great financial life ahead of you. So nearly without further ado, we'll get into the ultimate guide or the investing and saving tips that will make you a millionaire. Just before we do guys, if I could just ask for one thing, if you did enjoy the video, consider subscribing to stay updated on all the videos that I make. Please hit that sub button, that nice red button down there. It will keep you updated on all the videos that I post and if you love personal finance and investing as much as I do or you want to get into it, consider subscribing and you'll be able to watch all of my new videos that I put out around the topics. If you did learn anything throughout this video, make sure to absolutely destroy the like button. That greatly helps me out also with the YouTube algorithm. But now let's get into it. The first tip that I would have to give out there is to avoid student loan debt. Now, unless it's a 100% requirement for the career path that you want to go down or the job that you want to get, I believe you should honestly stay out of student debt. Now, with higher education, I can certainly understand the benefits of going to university. But just the cost of schooling and the cost of university is starting to get to a point where it is absolutely ridiculous. In Australia, it's not as bad, thankfully. The system that we have is all right. How it works is the government pretty much pays for schooling for you, for your university for you, uh, get, takes out a loan for you. Now that loan is at zero interest, it just keeps up with inflation. And when you start working, you have to start paying it back slowly, depending on how much you earn, depends on how much you have to pay back year by year. But yeah, pretty good system here in Australia, but even then, I still think the cost far outweighs the benefits and don't even get me started if you're in the USA. If you're in the USA, I just don't see the point of going to university. The price is absolutely ridiculous. The student loan system is absolutely ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. If it's not a 100% requirement for you to go to university for the career that you want to go down, then don't do it in my opinion. Obviously, that's just my opinion and you, if you feel like you're going to get some other benefits out of university, such as the social benefits or whatnot, then look, certainly go ahead. But me personally, I don't think it's worth it going to university and I definitely don't think it's financially worth it. But honestly, before you go to university, I personally think you should really consider this. Is going to uni for four years, five years, six years really worth it? Accumulating a debt for that four years, five years time, where instead of going to uni for that four years and earning no money, actually losing money, accumulating debt, you could be earning money instead, working full time for four years, five years. Huh? Huh? Put it this way, if I was still at uni, I would not own my investment property within the year or so. 
number one saving guide for life university i don't think it's a requirement unless obviously it is a requirement for your career path that you want to go down now number two kind of segues nicely from that i think as soon as you're done with school you should honestly try and get a job now may seem pretty basic obviously right you need a job to earn some money and the sooner that you can actually start working full time and the sooner that you're more comfortable with working full time you're obviously going to have more money to play with and you're going to have more money to save and be able to achieve those financial goals that you want quicker honestly i think it's absolutely worth it when you're younger knuckling down working those hard long hours the more that you work here now when you're younger just certainly obviously means that you'll have more money when you're older and you'll have to work less when you're older and you can hopefully retire earlier or work less hours when you're older. I think it's absolutely worth to absolutely just knuckle down when you're younger and work the hard hours. You can really build that solid financial base where you have plenty of money to go and invest or do whatever you want to. Now number three would be stay out of consumer debt completely. This is an ugly one. Now, when I say staying out of consumer debt, what I mean by consumer debt is pretty much all debt that isn't gonna help you at all. I'm talking like things like credit card debt, personal loan debts, unsecured lending debts, everything like that. Debts that you would use to purchase things that aren't gonna help you make money. There's good debts out there and there's bad debts. Bad debts are those things that I specifically talked about, those consumer debts. You know, where you're using the bank's money or someone else's money to go and buy clothes or a brand new car or something like that. Those purchases aren't going to be worth it financially. Uh, racking up debt at uh, high interest rates to buy silly things like that. Now, we have good debts. Good debts are good, obviously. Pretty much it's any debt that you take out that's actually going to be beneficial for you and actually going to help you make money in the long run. A great example of this and obviously the obvious one that comes first to everyone's heads is buying a house. Now yes, you do have to take out quite a bit of debt uh, to buy a house, but it's very safe because you get low interest rates uh, on something like that that's secured against a property and it's going to help you make money over time. The property is going to be worth more uh, 10 years down the track than what you purchased it for and you could even use it as an investment property, rent it out, get some income from it that way. So we certainly have those good debts which I 100% encourage, uh, go ahead and leverage your money to make you even more money, uh, but we have those bad debts that we should completely stay out of, they're, uh, they're not beneficial at all, they're not going to help you earn money or they're not going to make you financially better off. If you did ever find yourself struggling with say a high credit card balance or a high credit card debt then you could certainly have a look at a balance transfer, pretty much just transfers that balance on that credit card with that bank over to another bank. They'll give you some kind of special offer where it'll be a low interest rate for a period of time or zero interest for a period of time and you can pay it off there without having to worry about those interest charges dragging you down. That's certainly a good way to get out of consumer debt. But yeah, if you're in it, get yourself out of it and stay out of it completely is the best advice that I can give. Now number four also segues nicely with credit cards and everything like that. Number four would be to build your credit score. Now this one is pretty crucial because at the time if you go to take out a serious massive home loan, the banks are going to have a look at your credit score and your ability to manage credit and borrowings. Now obviously if your score is better than it is worse, uh, they're going to be more inclined to give you money or lend you money. Now building a good credit score is not as hard as you think. As long as you are responsible with a credit card, you can definitely achieve a good credit score. And my best advice would be, as soon as you can or as soon as you feel comfortable, open up a credit card, put a few purchases on there every month or so, make sure you always pay the closing balance off in full by the repayment due date. Doing that, you're not gonna get charged any interest at all on the credit card. You've put purchases on there that you would normally make anyway, and that's gonna build your credit score because you're using your credit card, you're not getting charged any interest at all, and it's actually gonna be beneficial for you because when you do go and get that important home loan or whatnot, you'll have some credit history there and it will be good. If you just pay the closing balance off of your credit card every month by the due date, you don't get charged any interest at all. Building a good credit score is great because it shows lenders you are able to manage credit and you're able to manage money that isn't yours. Now, number five would be live below your means. What I mean by that is pretty much spending as little as you possibly can. If you're making 50K a year, 60K a year, 70K a year, still act like you're working casually, 
at that fast food joint. You were living off that casual wage before, why can't you do it here now? That's the strict disciplines that I put myself through to save up for my first investment property. I used to work uh, at a fast food place here in Australia. I then got a full-time job. I still acted like, or I still just put that thought in my head like, you know, I, can, I used to be able to live off of that casual wage there now, let's still do it while I'm earning such a massive amount of money. All that extra money that I'm earning on top just chucked into savings, I was able to save up for my first investment property in about six to nine months. If you can live below your means, don't spend money on unnecessary items that is gonna help you in the long run and it's gonna help you save money a lot faster. All of these kind of little subscriptions and little purchases here and there, if you check your bank statement, they actually do add up over the month. If you can discipline yourself to cut back as much discretionary spending as possible, that will help you save money. Now, number six, now that you're earning enough money and you've cut back your spending, number six would be to open a high interest savings account. Now, with all of that money that you're earning, you need somewhere to park it that's gonna, you know, at least keep up with inflation or grow your money a little bit. In current economic times, you're probably struggling to find a savings account that's actually gonna make you money, but you can definitely put park funds in there that's gonna keep up with the average inflation rate. Now, a lot of the time, as well you probably wouldn't be looking at your main banks after a high interest savings account you would probably be looking at a lot of your smaller online only lenders you can open up a savings account online install their app or go on their website park your funds in there and you're going to earn a higher rate of interest on a high interest savings account with an online bank than what you would more than likely than some with some of the traditional banks but there's still some good ones out there. Obviously, all you really need to do is do your research online. It only will take you about, about five, 10 minutes or so to find one that's gonna suit you. Once you have, go on their website, open that account and park your money in there every time you get paid. It's gonna be more beneficial than you just keeping it all in your transactional account or in cash. As we know, money loses value by around about one, 2% uh, year over year thanks to inflation. So if you can keep track with that, then at least the value of your money isn't gonna shrink every year. Now number seven, once we're starting to save good amounts of money would be to invest that money. Whether that be in stocks or real estate, it is up to you, but investments are those things that are gonna help you preserve your money, help you preserve your wealth, and help you grow your money over time, make your money work for you instead of you working for your money. Whether you go down the stock route and you choose to passively invest, you know, just put a certain amount of your paycheck every time you get paid, into a market tracking ETF. That's just gonna track the average price of the stock market and build your wealth over time by around about six, 7% a year on average. Or you decide to actively invest where you're actively looking for companies to invest in, put your money in and hoping for a bigger return or a nicer return. It's up to you, but investing is definitely the key to building wealth. Whether you go down the real estate path where you get a bit of sa money saved up, dump that into a house, whether you're living in that house and you just want it to rise in value over time or you're using it as an investment property where you're getting some rental income each and every month, but also paying the house down, getting that increased in value, it's up to you. Whatever investment you decide to make, as long as it's not in BitConnect, you will be fine. Investing is the ultimate key or the ultimate path to building wealth uh, over time and it's obviously proven. History proves that investing does 100% build your wealth and make your money grow over time. And it's obviously the easiest and fastest way to do that. And it's not obviously the easiest and safest way to do that. But guys, that's pretty much all the advice that I can give to follow. It's exactly what I did and exactly what I'm currently doing. And I'm pretty confident if I keep following my own advice there, I will be a millionaire at some point in my life. Let's hope it's sooner rather than later. But yes, the earlier you can get started and the earlier you can implement this advice into your life is going to be more beneficial for you. You'll be able to achieve your financial goals and financial freedom faster, I can assure you of that but that's pretty much all I have for today guys like I said before if you did enjoy the video at any point or you learn anything please hit the like button it does definitely help me out click the circle to subscribe here check out this playlist in this video all I have for today guys you have a good one